What's going on, guys? Welcome back to LOI TV. Me and Griff are today joined by Dinny Corcoran, Drogheda United striker. Dinny, really appreciate you joining us today. How are you keeping? Yeah, all good. All good. How are you? All good. All good. Yeah, pretty good, yeah. So, uh, how's pre-season going? Obviously, moved to Drogheda. Um, so, how are you finding the squad? Like, how are you fitting in? Are you enjoying it? Yeah, so far, so good. Um, obviously, I knew Tim. From, I played with Tim at Sligo, so I knew him. And uh, I know his kind of philosophies on the game. And pre-season's been okay. Hasn't been too much running and stuff, you know. Cause, uh, I think those days are gone, kind of where you just do all, just old-fashioned running in pre-season. So, don't yeah. get me wrong, we've worked hard now. But, um, yeah, it's, it's been enjoyable so far. And I'm feeling old, and uh, beside all the lads are right. But um, it's a young enough team, but... Uh, no, I've settled in nicely. It seems like a good bunch of lads and uh, I can't wait to, to get going now, yeah. Kind of touching on it there with Tim Clancy. That's probably one of the main factors behind your move. Why did you think Drogheda was the right move? I know you've been there previously as well. Was that a factor as well? Uh, yeah, I, I, I was there in, I think it was 2011, so it's a good while back now. But yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely a good club. There's a good feel to it. There's, there's good people at the club that work behind the scenes and stuff. And it's a real football in town, Drogheda. So um, yeah, and obviously yeah, Tim was a big factor. Like I said, I played with him and, I know, I know his thoughts on the game, and he, he was straight up honest with me what he wants from me this season and what he expects from me. And um, yeah, I got along well with him, so I, I knew that would I would enjoy it more. So yeah, obviously, as you said, you're kind of joining a relatively young side without too much kind of top flight experience. Uh, how crucial will the experience of yourself, um, Dane Massey, Gary Deegan be coming into the side? Um, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd imagine it'll be quite quite important. I think um, with no disrespect to the first division, it. it it's a big step up to the Premier. It really is. I've played first division a couple of seasons, and um, the, the step up is quite significant. So uh, Tim's made the lads aware that you know we not the, the lads know just because they won the first division last year that it's it's going to be a completely different kettle of fish now. Um, but uh, yeah, obviously you're going to need experience in the dressing room like myself, Dane and Deegs and a few other lads have played in the league for a number of years. So kind of know the league well and, and, and stuff like that so it, it'll definitely help and that's what we're there for if the lads need anything we, we, we've been there long enough to, to know what to do like yeah for sure and um, has Tim Clancy obviously saying that he has kind of said what he wants from you specifically but has he kind of made it clear to the team what the ambitions are for the season like a newly promoted team usually it's about avoiding relegation but at the Strada side it feels like a really strong team is it more kind of ambitious towards maybe a mid-table finish um we haven't talked about it too much now, but um, yeah, I think looking at the squad, obviously, I think we're capable of doing well. But uh, in saying that, I think I think most squads have strengthened this year. I think it's it's going to be very competitive, and um, obviously, just just the new, newly promoted teams like ourselves and Longford people are going to look at to, to to just stay up. So um, I think I think our main aim is to obviously avoid relegation, not being a bit of a, a dogfight, but um. Yeah, I think with it, with the with the quality in the squad, why not? I think we can push push a bit higher, and um, we'll just have to see how things go. But yeah, obviously, avoid relegation is, is our main focus. Yeah. So uh, obviously, moving from Bowes, you're there for a few years. Um, obviously, scored a lot of goals, like uh, Bowes found myself so much appreciated. Um, <laughs> just uh, just did you feel that obviously because the COVID situation, uh, being no fans for the last or the majority of last season, like you didn't get the send off that you wanted, and do you think that if you go back to Daily Mount, uh, are you looking forward to it? Do you think does it like the fans will give you a reception that you want? Like, um, yeah, I, I haven't really thought about it. I, I really loved my time at Bowes. I, I think they'll always have a little special place in my heart. Like it's where I played my best football, definitely, and kind of got a little relationship with the fans and everyone in the club. So. Yeah, like I mean, I, I can't wait to go back to Daily Mount. I, it doesn't bother me that I didn't get the the send off or whatever. I'm not really interested in that. I got a lot of uh, positive feedback on social media from fans. They send me like private messages and stuff, so that means a lot. Like I really appreciate all that stuff. Um, to pity, yeah, to pity how the, the season, my time ended with balls. I mean, I didn't I didn't play much at all in the last two years basically, and even after getting back fit and training hard what I don't know whatever Keith's reasons are he just did, he wouldn't play me so it's kind of disappointed in that it still hurts a bit when I think back about it but um, I know overall obviously I, I had a good time up. I was like you said I scored quite a few goals and played played with some very good players made some fr good friends there and yeah like I said I'll always have a little a little special place in my heart and yeah I'd be lying if I if I said I didn't look for the uh, for that fixture when they came out alright yeah yeah, definitely. Um, obviously, you just touched on it there. You didn't play like 
a lot of football compared to your first few seasons the last two years. Uh, probably a lot of that stemming from the injury that you suffered back in 2019. Um, how was that recovery like? Was it very tough coming back from that? Um, it was quite tough, yeah. I mean, I think the toughest part was the, the, the immediate aftermath. Like, I couldn't move for probably four weeks. Like, and I, I, well, my son was three at the time. He's four now, but he was three at the time. And my girlfriend was working, so I had him all day. And it was it was tough. Like, I couldn't play with him. I couldn't drive. I couldn't bring him out anywhere. It was it was more mentally tough than anything, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah, that was the worst part. But once I got over that, and I could start kind of slowly jogging and stuff. To be honest, it, it wasn't too bad. I mean, I didn't need to get an operation or surgery. It was a, just a clean break. So it just healed itself naturally. And it started feeling good pretty quick, actually. And um, it's grand now. It's recovered fully. And, uh, yeah, it's a pity because I think, uh, like, the, the, the reason I did didn't play a lot the last two years was because of that it kind of stemmed from that and I mean when I came back the team were doing well and stuff and it was tough to get in but um, yeah it's unfortunate because I, I, I was playing well before that injury and um, yeah I, I, I really feel I could have went on and had a good year I think the top score finished on 13 or 14 that season I felt I yeah. could have you had could have went on like, five, five after the first think, month or something, wasn't I it? Think or something? I, was yeah, seven, yeah, I think yeah. I was seven. Yeah, I think I think I was on seven when I got in. But you got the player of the month as well, didn't you? That I think the first one. Yeah, I got that. Yeah, in, yeah, yeah. I think it was February. Yeah, so I got yeah. off to a great start and yeah. confident and stuff. And then that happened, you know, bad time because yeah. I was just just turned thirty as well, which <laughs> isn't ideal, you know. But I'm feeling good now. Thank God. It, uh, there was times I thought that could be the end of me, you know, I might not play again. Yeah. But thankfully, that wasn't the case, and I'm feeling good now. So could have been a lot worse. Is that why you felt that? Uh, it was the right move, like now to go to Drogheda. Just uh, obviously, like the last season, not playing as much as you wanted to. Is that why you felt like it was probably best to move on? Like, yeah, definitely. Um, I think I spoke to a few clubs in the off season, you know, and weighed up my options. And I think at the end of the day, it's it's just about playing again. Like uh, I just turned thirty two there a couple of weeks ago, so I mean, I'm no no spring chicken anymore. So. I might only have a year or two, three, three max probably left in me. So I think that the main focus this year is just playing and enjoying it again and, you know, getting out on the pitch again because it's been so long since I've felt like I've had a competitive match, you know. I still have the fire in my belly now. So I'm just, uh, just want to get playing again and enjoying it. And I think I, I felt I had it was a good opportunity for that. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it now. Yeah. yeah, I mean, to be fair, like you're not that old. Like, but, uh, <laughs> no, you, uh, not that old. No, I don't. I don't you... rely on my pace so much or anything. Thankfully, so yeah. <laughs> uh, hopefully, have a couple of years left. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Have you thought about what you're going to do after football? Uh, not really. Like I, I'm working away at the moment now as well, so I work full time as well. So that that that's that was in my head when I was approaching thirty. Like I kind of need to cop on and. Since I left school, it was just football, 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 you know, nothing else on your mind. But um, you got to the stage where I kind of need to do something else. And um, long term, like, I'm not sure, like, coaching, I wouldn't mind getting into the coaching side of things, maybe just locally with kids and stuff, you know. But um, I haven't really thought about it too much, to be honest, no. But I'm definitely going to play football for as long as I can, no matter what the level. I, I love it, like, so see how things go over the next few years. And uh, we'll just finish off with some quick fire questions for you, if that's all right. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. So the first one is uh, your favourite player when you were growing up? Um, That's got to be messy. I just, even to this day, I just love watching him. He just, yeah. he's he's like no one else. You just watch him. He, he just give me the goose once and all. He's just, just some of the stuff. And I know he's getting to the end. You wouldn't say that so much about him now, but if you guys remember back in like 2012 and around yeah. his prime, it was oh, yeah. frightening, like seriously. Something else. Yeah, so I kind of have to him. And being a big Chelsea fan, obviously I loved Drogba, Lampard, Terry, you know. Damien yeah. Duff when he joined, it was great. See an Irish yeah, one there. Yeah. But uh, I, I have to pick Messi. He's just uh, he's, yeah, he's yeah, class. Him so over Ronaldo fast. then, yeah? Definitely for me, yeah. Like, yeah, I, I mean, I think I have this argument with my mates nearly every week or two, you know. <laughs> but uh, for me, it's definitely messy. Like, obviously, different qualities. Ronaldo's a better, a better athlete, you know. He's yeah. phenomenal. Like, but uh, when it comes to football, like, there's, there's only one winner. There's no yeah, doubt about yeah. it, you know. Uh, the best player I've ever played with. Best player I've played. Um, probably. Uh, well, 
Shawnee Williams, he's probably actually out your way, Ross, is he? From Malahoy or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He played with him at uh, Sporting Fingal. Played with him at Sporting Fingal, yeah. yeah. And he was, he was, you could just tell he was kind of a cut above everyone, you know. Like, And then he went, I think it was MK Dons he signed for originally. He's at, he's still at Millwall now. Millwall now, but, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, he was he was brilliant. That that was the first time I kind of looked at a player and I was like, wow, like he's he's the next level, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then say, apart from that, like, because I can't really, like I'd say him, well, I didn't really play with him much, so I can't really say him, but obviously I've trained with him every day. I'd say playing wise, I loved playing with Wardy um at Bowes for years. We just seemed to kind of click, you know, we had a, a great yeah. partnership on and off the pitch, a great relationship. I'd say he probably set up oh, 70 percent of my goals, I suppose, you know. <laughs> we just kinda of seemed to, to work well together. So yeah, him and, and Keith Oakley. Keep Oakley was brilliant as well. So the hardest opponent you've ever played against? Hardest opponent. Um you know, there's been a few good defenders now around the league the last couple of years. Um Whew. Andy Boyle off the knocks, good. Kenny Brown was always tough, very physical. Um, and Ryan McBride, God love him. Um, he was always tough to play. With. He's always he's the one defending it after the game. He'd be just getting aches and pains everywhere yeah. from knocks and bumps and bruises. He, he was very tough. So um, yeah, the three of them kind of spring to mind when that question comes around. I'd say yeah. Yeah, three top defenders. Um, yeah. Your favorite goal you ever scored? Um. Ooh. James will probably remember a few of these. <laughs> the winner <laughs> against the, obviously the winners against Rovers were great, like just yeah. just for the fans and because they were a winning goal as well, obviously you know. Yeah. But um, the reason one that stands the, pe- the penalty, the penalty, the rebound. Oh jeez, we... I was lucky there. Yeah. Jeez, there stop for a second. <laughs> <laughs> oh stop! Yeah, I'd, I'd probably actually two of them were penalty. Well, that rebound and I'd one other penalty, and then yeah. then the one from open play, I like that one because obviously it wasn't a penalty. <laughs> but um, uh, any goal, any winner against Rovers, I mean, it's, it's just something else. Said, yeah, yeah, the changes the weekend for you, and then yeah. obviously the one that the other one that stands out was actually against Drogheda, funnily enough, because yeah. it was it was probably about I don't know 30, 35 yards out, and that's just not me at all. Like I, yeah. I, I'm usually found in the box, but I just struck it and I went in the top corner, and I just just I always remember that because it was so unlike me, like you know, yeah, I've yeah. scored many like that. Then our uh, final question for you is your uh, best moment in football. Best moment in football. Oof. You could probably go back to the Dublin Derby moment, possibly. I probably well. would, to be honest. Yeah. yeah, I mean, obviously, when I was younger, schoolboy uh, representing Ireland was always yeah a dream come true, kind of. You know, like, but that that's if that's schoolboy. Like, obviously, since then, I'd say yeah. I mean, I haven't I haven't won much, unfortunately, as part of the Sporting Fingal team that won the. Um, I feel like but I wasn't a big part of it, so I couldn't really say that, you know. Uh, I suppose just that probably is the, the the Dublin Derby victories like they just it's brilliant the reaction you get from all the fans and it just yeah. makes your weekend, you know. It's, it's yeah. brilliant, and all they all talk about Dublin is uh, Dublin is black and red yeah. and stuff like that, you know. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'd just say them. But I have a lot of good memories. Just I don't know. Yeah, I suppose I'd pick them. I suppose, yeah. Yeah, class, Dinny. Really appreciate you coming on. Best luck for the season. Really appreciate no you uh, joining us today. Thanks very much, lads. Thanks for having me.